Hey folks, welcome to Power Tips. In this video, you are going to learn how to write unit test cases against your plugins in Dataverse. In the previous two videos, we saw how to write your plugin, how to register your plugin, and how to debug it. Right? In this video, it's all about unit testing our plugins. So let's get started. Following our previous example of superhero where we had power stats and we were averaging the power stats whenever we were saving it. So that was basically what our plugin was, right? So we, we are going to use the same plugin and then write a unit test case against that plugin. So let's uh, start with the uh, code. So here we have our same old plugin class right and uh, this was the calculate superhero score plugin and as you can see we were taking the scores or stats of the superhero from a post image doing a calculation averaging it out and then updating the average on the superhero record again right so this is where the update were, was happening here so now that we have written the plugin already we are gonna see how we can write a unit test case against this plugin so first thing what we want to do is we want to create a new project i'm gonna add a new project and it would be a unit test project for .NET Framework. Now, if you don't see it in any of your recent project template, you can always search for unit test and uh, select the .NET Framework one because our plugin is all only supported by .NET Framework as of today. Next, when you give your plugin an, um, project, your unit test project a nice name, so I'll give power tips dot plugins dot unit test okay it's gonna use the same dot net framework that we have used for the plugin project which was 4.7.1 so we're gonna keep the same and we are gonna create the project now once the project is created it will come with a default unit test one class you can rename this class and say um, calculate superhero score test. Okay, we'll rename the class name as well. And then this test method can be uh, execute plugin test. Okay, so now we have created everything that we need on the unit test project. Now, what we're going to use is we're going to use a NuGet package called fake XRM easy. Fake XRM easy makes things easier as the name suggests easy, right? It makes things easier to write unit test cases and everything is done in memory. So you're not actually connecting to a Dynamics instance to do your testing. And because everything is in memory, uh, it's pretty fast and you don't have to you know, clean, do any cleanups. So you go to unit test project, right click it and then uh, select manage new kit packages. And go to your browse and search for fake XRM easy. Now fake XRM easy have several versions. Uh, because some would need it for uh, 2011, 2013, 2015, 2016, whatever versions are available of uh, CRM. And then the latest version is 9.0, like 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, right? Uh, those, that's the latest version. You can find this information on his page uh, under when you're going to installing. This is a guide and the link will be in the video's description. 
So once you go to this page, you will see that there are various versions and each version is listed here. So if you're uh, working against 8.2 version, you will install 365. If you are working against 9.x version or going forward, it will be version 9. Okay, so that's what we are going to use. We are going to use version 9. So going back to our code here, we'll install version 9. And what it will do is it will also install all the dependencies. So any of the SDK, core SDK assemblies that we need, those would also be installed as you can see here. Core SDK assembly is getting installed, uh, workflow, uh, deployment, XRM tooling, core libraries, all of this that are needed for your uh, no, for your Dynamics plugins, some of those uh, libraries would automatically be installed when you install fake XRM easy. So you don't have to separately install them in the unit test project. So just waiting for it to get installed. Okay, so now once it installs, it takes you to this page where it shows you uh, or provides you an overview of how to start with fake XRM easy. And it's pretty straightforward. So it has this installation guide. And I'm gonna skip the animation. Uh, where it tells you exactly what you need to install. Uh, then your first test uh, tells you uh, what to do, right? Um, how to initialize the context, uh, how to you know write uh, proxy types assemblies uh, if you're using early bind. I'm gonna explain all of this, but this is a nice page that it loads, which tells you what you need to do with your unit tests as well. Okay, so we're gonna dive a little deeper uh, and, and you can go through this on your own uh, once you install it, but we are actually gonna write our unit test uh, on the plugin itself. So we have this test project, uh, test class created for us. So as we saw briefly in that Dynamics value um, URL, that we have to first go and uh, create a context for the um, XRM faked context. Okay, so we're gonna copy this line from here and we're gonna paste that line here. And now, because we have used uh, XRM faked context, it doesn't uh, have the library, so we're gonna add the library. Now, version, there are there is a new version that has come up recently, which is version 2.0 for the for fake XRM easy. Uh, and if you go to dynamics value, uh, you can click on this link, which tells you um, how to migrate to uh, the new version, okay? So if you want to migrate to version 2.0, you can get this documentation over here. Okay, so there's 2.0 and 3.0 versions available. And it tells you why. Uh, reasoning. Um, now, because I'm using version 1.0, I'm getting this deprecated um, deprecated warning. I don't like any warnings in my code, right? So, how do you get rid of this warning? So, you can use this IntelliSense, and it will tell you either you can add an obsolete keyword on the top of this. But if you add an obsolete keyword, and if you're using this in any of the other places it will still give you the same um, same warning or you can suppress this one now if you if you really know that you are not going to use 2.0 or 3.0 versions and if you're going to stick to 1.0 version then you can suppress this warning altogether uh, but once you suppress it it would you have two choices you can suppress it per line basis or you can suppress it uh, for the overall um, project and that is what I want I want it to suppress for the entire project okay so that's what I'm going to use here so now once you do that it should go away and uh, it, it creates an editor dot uh, dot editor config file in the solution items and um, that's how it knows which warnings to suppress now once we have the uh, XRM fake context created Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, again, 
Oh, I close that page. So next thing what you want to do is um, initialize the plugin context. So plugin context is equal to context dot get default plugin context. Pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. So once we have initialized, so I'm going to write a comment here in it. Then we are going to prepare our data. So preparing our data set, preparing our target, like, you know, like when you're doing any testing, you have to first prepare the data, execute it, right? And then assert it. So that's what you, we would be doing here as well. So after preparing, we would be executing, execute, and then assert. So under prepare, uh, you, uh, we would first create a target, so target, and this target would be new entity, and because entity doesn't have a reference, we'll add that reference as well. It's a new entity, and this entity would be the same entity that we have used in our calculate superhero score, which is um, PMAV superhero. So I'm going to copy that entity name. Okay, and uh, it it's going to have an ID because it's going to be an update or it's going to be a create. Uh, but if it's going to be update, then it will have an ID. So let's go and create an ID as well here. So ID is equal to good. Good. Okay. So that's our target. Now target. Uh, as you remember was also like what we were doing is we were updating the show hide power stats from no to yes and that is what was triggering our plugin and that is what was um, our, condi our logic was using that to check if I should be triggering the logic or not so this show hide power stat should be true so we want to add this in our target as well because if it doesn't exist in the target it won't run the logic so target dot attributes dot add we add that with a value true okay now going back to a plugin just to trace what we had done in the plugin you will see that we are also using post images and we are using all of these attributes from the post images uh, to go and calculate, do the calculation. So that is what we would need here as well. So we would need where post image is equal to new entity, uh, same thing and it would have the same ID. Now, because it's gonna have the same ID, uh, we cannot do new grid again. So let's just remove it from here and say where id is equal to id so we generate it only once and we use it on two places okay now same thing with uh, what we did with uh, add attribute of uh, show height power stats we will be adding uh, all of these attributes too so instead of typing all of those attributes, I'm going to just type one attribute and then I'm going to show, I'm going to just copy paste the rest of them. So power stats intelligence is the first one. So I'm going to do post image dot attributes dot add and um, the attribute name and then the value. So value is going to be 50 for intelligence and I'm going to do the same for the rest of them as well. So let me just copy paste. And the rest of the values are going to be 50 as well. So instead of 20, I'm going to do 50 everywhere. Okay. So my target is ready. My post image is ready. Now what I want to do is, in my plugin, we have parameters, right? So that is another thing that is available in, 
through the fake XRMEZ is the parameter collection. So in the parameter collection, um, I am going to add our target and our post image. Okay. So in first collection is going to be our input parameters. So in inside input parameters we'll have uh, add target and the target is going to be our target entity right and then the next one is going to be our uh, post image and pre image so for post image pre image there is entity image collection and then this is going to be our post images right so image entity collection and then post images dot add uh, our post image name and then the post image that we want to add okay now we have the parameter input parameter and then post image is defined the next next thing that we would be doing is adding this input parameter and post images inside the plugin context so we have defined the plugin context but we have not used it so plugin context dot uh, input parameters we'll go with input parameter just realize i have uh, misspelled input parameters so let me correct it parameters okay and then we would also add our post image okay post images is what it's going to be so if we have added the input parameters and then we have added the post images now the next thing that we want to do is uh, because we are using late bind entities we have to ensure that the in-memory data or in-memory database has the definition for the superhero and how can we ensure that it has the definition for the uh, for the superhero entity is in our context our context we have a method called initialize okay uh, this initialize method takes in all the entities that we have so in our example it's going to be uh, list so i think the so list is missing here so we'll add the generic list reference as well and it's going to be list of entity because it is late bind and our entity is going to be uh, the post image now why post image uh, post image entity is the complete entity it does not have show height power state so let's just add that as well in the post image entity okay so now our post image entity becomes a complete entity which means when you initialize the context with the with this particular post image entity it now has the definition for superhero entity and its attributes um, set of or subset of attributes not all but subset of attributes right so that is the initialization part now this is all what we need for preparing our data next thing is we would be executing our plugin so to execute our plugin which is our calculate superhero score we first have to add it add a reference in our unit test project for the plugin project so add a reference and go to uh, projects and go to solutions and this is our plugin project right so we are going to add a reference to that plugin project in our unit test project and then i'm going to copy the class name because that is what we are going to invoke right so context dot uh, there's an execute method and there are several execute methods that are available what we're going to use is uh, we are going to use execute plugin with and then it will take the assembly name or the name of your plugin uh, not the assembly but name of your plugin uh, in this case the plugin 
is going to be this calculate superhero score so that is what i'm going to paste here and then uh, the parameter is uh, it's optional parameter but the parameter is going to be the plugin context okay and calculate superhero we have to add the reference the reference so now we executed the plugin at in at this point what it will do is it will call this plugin and execute the uh, entire thing and the reason why i like fake xrm is because even though we are calling the service we are calling like we are calling the service here for the update it's doing all those things in memory and it's not actually calling the dynamic service uh, but then how do you assert everything is happening in the memory but how do you know whether the changes have been correctly done or not so for that uh, we would have uh, so uh, what is this so super hero after execution okay and then we'll do context dot context now has a method called uh, get query uh, create query sorry create query okay and uh, create query takes in the name of your entity which is your superhero entity and this query results in a list so it, it's a uh, i queryable which means there would be multiple uh, but we only want to select the first um, superhero entity because there is only going to be one superhero entity in the system in, in the in the memory right because we what we are doing is in our logic we are updating the same entity that we are sending in as a parameter so that's why we would do first or default Again, I think so. We need to include the uh, system dot link, which is missing. So I'll just fix that. Okay. Uh, so now we got the uh, data that just got updated. Next, what we want to do is we actually want to do the assert. So assert dot equal or r equal mm, yeah. and then what is the expected so expected or maybe i'll do equals equals um equals also has uh, object a and object b so object a is going to be our what was expected right so expectation was that we would be adding up all of this and then taking an average of this which will come out to be 50 right so answer is 50 and then we will compare it with the actual data that uh, the plugin executed against so superhero after execution and then the attribute name right and the attribute name is combined power stats take that put it over here and that's it that's your uh, unit test case now how do we how do we check whether it's working or not so first thing what i'm going to do is um, i am going to do 40 here and we'll build the project so it shows up in the text uh, test explorer so build was successful we'll go to text uh, explorer and go to the unit test project and do run okay. so th this should fail right and it failed because our 40 did not match the combined power stats that we were looking for uh, so now let's go and fix 50 and let's run it again Okay. now this time it should pass okay and it failed 
50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Uh, let's see what's wrong. So we can do another thing to test it is put a debugger here and let's say debug. And you can actually look at the data that shows up after execution. I'm going to check all the views. So combined power stat was 50. Um, so I am not sure why it's not asserting. I'll do R. I don't know why I used equals. Um, should have used R equals. So expected was 50 in actual. Okay. So now it should have been R equals in the first place. And now let's see. There you go. So it was all successful. Now, if I am changing the code and let's say, you know, I removed, uh, I removed compact from here and I removed compact from here save it now this is gonna obviously uh, not have the right result because one of the value is missing so let's just remove this save it and let's go and run the test now this is obviously gonna fail but this is where we would know exactly what was expected. So think about this. You have written a plugin, but then after a few months, someone changed the plugin and now your unit test cases have started to fail. And that is the indication that something in the plugin is not right. And, uh, and you would see that um, clearly over here that expected was 50, but then you got 41. And now you would go and, you know, check your version histories and whatnot and then see hey someone removed compact and that should have not been removed so you will add it back and once you add it back the test case would run again and now it would result in a successful test case execution that's it guys if you have liked this video, then you would like these two videos as well. So check them out. Until next time.